here is a fairly old Willard's Classic Tipper Trimmer made in the USA. I don't believe they make these anymore, but it's basically in a billet aluminum uh, block for putting tips on full sticks. As you can see, it comes with these adapters here. It's a three pieces like this, and this part slides into the hole right here. As you can see, it's got a bronze insert. I think it's bronze, not brass. You know, so you would take your your pool stick like this, slip it on this side, slip this end in here. See, this is a Delrin, I believe, and it, when you crush, when it crushes down, it holds everything nice and tight. So you put this on like this. They say the video says to leave about an inch, which that's, I guess that's about what I usually leave. But you see, it goes right in here like this, and as you can see, right here, it's got basically it's like a pencil sharpener, but it's a much more precision version of a pencil sharpener. It's got a blade in here. You could take this blade out, change them out, or sharpen them. Uh, it's quite sharp. It's basically like a razor blade. But anyway, it goes in here. It goes in this hole on the end here. And it holds it on this flat spot. So I push it all the way in, hold it down. And see, once your tip is glued on, then you can put it in here and trim it off, trim it off the rest of the way. See, and you would turn it as you come in, and it holds this perfectly straight. So the farther in it goes, once you get in far enough, you can see that it's trimming. It's trimming off the tip. So what I would normally do is I would take some tape like this. This is just painter's tape. And I would wrap it. I would wrap a piece around the tip before I set it all up like this. And I'd wrap a piece around the tip flush with the, tip, with the end of the ferrule. Just like that. That way when I glue the tip on that I can't get this is a hot mess right here anyway let me get a straight piece of course the whole purpose of this stuff is because it's supposed to come off easily let's see exactly even with the ferrule and you wrap it on and you'll give it a couple wraps so when you glue your tip on you know, obviously your tip is going to be bigger Check out this tip collection I got up in here. Tons and tons of tips. Anyway, you'll glue the tip on to the end of that. And I have one of these long, it's like a, a vice thing, like this, and I just have it mounted vertically. So I'll, I'll, I'll glue the tip on. And then, you know, with this, and I'll clamp it down like this. And I'll let it harden. And believe it or not, the, I find the best thing is the super glue control gel because it doesn't wick into the leather of the tip quite so quickly. Because what happens if 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 the tip wicks the leather, if the tip wicks the super glue into the tip, it'll it'll be dry, and then it won't have a good bond. So the uh, the gel super glue seems like it does the best as far as not drying out too much. So anyway, you can see that it's holding it's holding the tip. So once I got it glued on, you know this tip would normally be sticking out like 14 millimeters. This is a 12 and a half ish shaft. See, so you could run it, you could run it down in here. And just trim it off nicely you can see it, it'll trim off it'll trim off the tape too if it's too big what I'll do is I'll sometimes I'll put it in a grinder so I'll have like a grinding wheel and then I'll take it off 
until it starts to just barely touch the tape. And that'll get it small enough so I don't have to take off quite so much with this cutter. But usually with soft medium tips, the cutter takes the cutter takes them down quite nicely. Let's see, so I could trim up a little bit of mushroom and that there's been on this one. And that's basically how the tool works. Um, when you first cut off when you first cut off the tip with a razor blade, you basically you know take the tip off flush as you can with the razor blade. And in the first step on this other side, this hole, it's got this flat disc with sandpaper on it. Put it through here, and it would take off the tip. So you could turn it, it would take that tip off perfectly flat. See down in there? You just sit there and turn that. It would take it off flush. That would get your ferrule completely flush. And then this part trims the tip, trims the tip, you know, to the appropriate shape. So it will take, you You just want to take off until it's just barely starting to take off just a little bit of ferrule. But you really don't want to take off too much because otherwise your tips are going to end up like a, a pencil, like a pencil sharpener. But this one came with two collets, two different sizes. I usually just use the biggest one because it doesn't seem like it really matters. The other way I used to, you know, level off the tip is one of these slips. It slips on, slips on the ferrule like this, and then what? You know, once the tip is cut off, this will cut it. This will cut it flush with the ferrule. This works pretty good too, as well. Only thing I do notice is quite often that it will ding up. See, there's some felt taped inside the jaws of this. That way, when it clamps down on the shaft, it doesn't ding it up. See, I've got another one. It doesn't have anything on it, and I don't use this one because if I clamp down, it puts little dings in the shaft. That's that's pretty much no good. But my setup here for you know once the tip once the tip is on there and it's you know pretty close like this, I'll pull the tape off once it's been trimmed down with the. Uh, classic tipper pull the tape off and if you notice what I got set up here this is a cup basically it's a cup like would go on the bottom of a chair and it was a, it was a little setup I bought on eBay at some point but this is the cup for the butt so I could do the butt of a house cue and then of course the way the way I get this drill set up I'd have to have it set way out here but originally, I, I believe this was something they sold on eBay. It was called a cowboy thing, something or other. But you would mount it to the table. And you can see here, this cup, it's just a rubber cup with a bolt through the middle. You can see down in there, there's just a bolt through the middle. It's just chucked up in the drill. And the drill is basically just held to this bench. So you can slip this in here. And as the drill spins, then this spins, and it's it's pretty straight. So obviously, you'd have to support this outer part. So this was designed to bolt to the bench like this, and and it would hold it like this. But what I would find, even if I had it bolted perfectly to the bench, that these little rollers would would make a little ring in the wood. So that I just didn't find that, that worked very good. It, it originally came with a, a rubber piece of tubing that would fit on here to kind of protect it, but it still kind of smashed it, and I just found I didn't have very good luck with it. But what works fine is just hold it with your hand. Just, you know, the drill. So this cup is holding the shaft right here, and you just let it spin with your hand, and you can basically just take, you know, your leather or, you know, some sandpaper. Like this is some 1,200 grit sandpaper. And the way I've got it set up, on the drill, I've got this variable speed control, you know, here, so I'll turn it all the way down. As you can see, I'm going to change the speed. See, so, hold it out. Now, if, if the shaft that you're working on is too loose for this little cup, you know, if you've worn the cup out, you can always just put a little piece of tape like this around the cup, and that'll hold it, and that works quite well. See, and it just spins, it just spins like this, and you can see that it's not really any problem 
just to sit here and spin it, you know, once your tip's on there, then you can basically just sand it down and you add a little more speed. See, and then when you get done, you, you use leather. And turn it up a little bit more. You can see it's no problem just to hold it, just to hold it while it's running. It doesn't hurt anything. Speed back down, <clears throat> but anyway, usually when I do the the shape of the tip, I use one of these sandpaper. I don't know what it's called, but it, but I'll turn it. I'll turn it slowly. I'll turn it slowly, and I'll pull back and forth like this. And I put this piece of tape here because, as you can imagine, if you're going like this while it's turning, if it slips out. If it slips out of here, you will gouge the ferrule. So ask me how I know. See, so I turn it back on slow, like this, get it turning. And as you can see, that it's not any problem to hold it while it's turning. It doesn't burn your hand or everything, you just don't grab it too hard. See, you can basically just pull like this. Once you've got the appropriate shape, and a lot of times what I do is I use one of these ultimate tip tool, and I'll just I'll clean it up on the end like this. I add a little bit more speed to it. see does a pretty good job of course it I need to go over this with some sandpaper to clean it up a little bit but anyway that's basically how I would use this Willard's classic tipper trimmer and I've probably had it 15 years and I've had good results with it I actually bought a lathe so that I would could do tips a different way but I find that this is just quicker than going you know going over to my dad's house and getting the lathe and dealing with that you know I could just put a tip on and probably the, the, the worst part is waiting for the tip to dry because I find if you if you do this too early and then you're you know you're turning through here trending that tip that tip will pop off and then you basically have to start over so just just take your time make sure the super glue is fully hardened up of course and it's getting into winter it's a lot cooler so it takes a lot longer for the, the super glue and plus the way this is set up here you can also sand your whole shaft basically you know I would say the harshest that I would use is probably 500 grit then I would do a thousand, maybe fifteen hundred, two thousand, and then I'll finish up with uh, you know, this is just a piece of leather, so it's got kind of a coarse side and a sort of a shiny side. I usually do the coarse side first, and then the shiny side, and that'll kind of give it give it a nice polish at the end. And then I usually just use like a little drop of spit to give it to give it the shine here on the end. Anyway, like and subscribe.